welcome back welcome back we're on activity four and i've taken this directly from the examiner's report so let me just quickly read what it says here it says the learner should compare the recommended system to the initial organization's requirements consider if it will enable all staff to undertake their job roles and if there are any limitations learners should ensure they evaluate the complete solution including future developments evidence relating to alternative solutions that could be used uh, was weak in work of many learners so they're actually telling you what to do and also what most people did so i'm going to go through and i'm going to only show you guys when i get to my word document what i would do so again for everything that we've said we're going to do for every single piece of hardware for every person that needs to use the hardware for for everything that comes together to make the infrastructure i'm going to ensure i give you um why i think it was good an alternative and the justification so for this it's going to be evaluate the solution so what did they want or need what did we give them possible alternatives future developments example they wanted a website can we accommodate this with the technology that we currently have so we've bought them loads of laptops we bought them loads of tablets and ipads and internet and all of this stuff with what we've given them, can we now accommodate a website being put into the mix of everything? So activity four is layout. Yes, the solution should be for now and for the future. So you don't just design a solution for now, because what will happen is when they want to add or upgrade anything in the future, they might have to come and redesign the entire thing if it was not designed to be scalable. Be scalable means that I can add more stuff to it later on and it should work more or less well enough it shouldn't break it shouldn't crash it shouldn't have to redesign everything so i've put in um three simple stages and i have is it appropriate appropriate means does it do what it's supposed to do within some decent level of reason so the example i gave i believe the last time was there's no point in me right the laptop i'm on now is a uh intel core i7 rtx 3070 ti 32 gigabytes of ram one terabyte of SSD storage is a gaming laptop. There's no need for a company like this is simple restaurant to have a gaming laptop as their PCs. This laptop, when it was just bought, I didn't buy it. It was about, let's say, 18, 1900 pounds. So 1000 pounds, 1900 pounds. Is that appropriate for this company? Not really, because that's massive overkill. Alternatives. So if I chose, let's say I chose mm, for a company like this, I could have chosen um, I thought I did like like an Asus Vivo book with a Core i5, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabyte SSD. I could have also done a Chromebook. Uh, Chromebooks are very, very cheap. You can get a Chromebook for about, I think the cheapest one's 179 pounds. You can get one for 180 pounds, right? Would a Chromebook be a good alternative? In some instances, I would say yes, actually, because again, these people are doing mainly admin tasks, sending emails, making flyers. Uh, creating contracts, printing stuff, everything around that a Chromebook can do. A Chromebooks are very, very secure. Why was that not a better alternative versus a standalone laptop? Chromebooks to work as best as they could or should work, they need to have 100% access to the internet. When they don't, some things don't really work as well. So I would have opted for a normal Windows 11, Windows 10 laptop or desktop just so that they can still do stuff when there is not an active internet connection. I can still edit my Word document, save stuff. The Chromebook, every, everything is synced to your Google um, Drive, your Google account. So if you don't have the internet, maybe not the best thing. And finally, I have justification. It kind of links into appropriateness. So you could, I would, I, I would still stick to three labels. So you're going to essentially have a table like this, let's say. I'm going to show this again anyway. Table is going to be split into three sections, right? The first one is going to be appropriateness. The next one is going to be alternative. So I'm going to put AL and the final one is going to be justification. And for each thing you speak about, so let's just say I spoke about um, the tablets, right? So I'm going to put tablet here, T-A-B for tab. And I'm going to say, why was a tablet appropriate for what I said it was going to be used for? And in this case, the people are going to walk around the restaurant, order stuff on the tablet. It gets sent to the order screen in the, in the restaurant, uh, the chef, sorry <laughs> the kitchen i don't know why why that lost me um it gets sent to the kitchen those guys can see it. it gets sent to the servers it gets backed up everybody can see everything why is a tablet appropriate for this it's wireless it has wi-fi it has 4g worst case the wi-fi goes on it still has 4g 
some of these restaurant tablets will even have a card reader on them so the card reader will be built in at the back people can simply tap their cards or tap their phones nowadays that's what most people are using to pay for stuff in the uk america and some of the other big countries anyway an alternative to this i could find another pos system that's maybe not a tablet but uh, a stationary pos system for example this is how it's going to work so let me not spend too much time on this so appropriate why do you think your solution was good that's what you're going to ask yourself the laptop is suitable as the owner and managers only need to do basic admin tasks that's what i said earlier why not a better laptop and why not a worse laptop and not a better laptop because again basic admin tasks on 8 gigabytes of ram 256 gig ssd intel core i5 that's pretty decent i mean we're using word most of the time we're using chrome we're using whatever booking system we use to um to have people come to interviews most likely a cloud one so it's online why not a worse laptop because again you want it to last for some amount of time the laptop i chose in the previous videos would probably last them as, as i mentioned like a good four or five years with updates and everything would still be relatively smooth doing what they're doing now and what they said they're going to do in the future they don't really need much more power so again we designed for now and we designed for the future as well and in the section called alternatives i would do what else could have been used ask yourself that question uh what else could have been done so something else that could have been done the alternative would be to get a laptop with this spec this would have been overkill as they only need to carry out admin tasks when i say this spec it was very loose i meant the spec of the laptop i was using so again i7 is what i have now 32 gigabytes of ddr5 ram i believe um one terabyte ssd i have a rtx 3070 ti in this laptop very powerful gaming laptop it, it can run anything at almost um high or extra high or this would have been too slow as some of the software they use need more ram to run smoothly so again you don't want anything too high you don't want anything too low a good middle of the ground and the way i would do this is let's say the the most intensive software that we're using the software that uses the most resources the most ram the most uh, cpu power the most ssd storage find out what that software is in your system and let's say it needs four gigabytes of ram go above the recommended so there's minimum spec there's a recommended spec what i would do is go above the recommended spec to ensure that whatever upgrades come in the next two three four five years should more or less be okay people with eight gigabytes of ram in their laptops and and 256 gigabyte ssds from the last five years ago are most likely still using those laptops today so again don't go too high don't go too low middle ground is pretty good in most cases find out the minimum spec of what you need and go slightly above it and for justification why is this one or the one you chose better than the alternative so the first one is it's a bit tricky why is it appropriate is why is it good for what you said it's going to be good for why what you said is going to be used for and this one is justification so we look at the two alternatives now we look at the two options that we have hint none are better in general it is based on the scenario so even though i've said to you that my laptop is overkill my laptop is not overkill for every single scenario my laptop is overkill for this scenario if let's say i decided my friends and i we love playing games we decided let's make a gaming development company this laptop would be a very good starting point yeah gaming companies have these massively powerful servers and laptops and desktop pcs that they need but an admin company doesn't need that this option was chosen due to the price portability and the fact that the laptop could easily carry out the admin tasks while meeting all the recommended specifications for the software to be used the softwares or the softwares they're going to be using again that's what i was mentioning here not too high not too low middle of the ground but slightly above the recommended and that's it for activity four i'm going to jump into my word document next i'm going to show you guys just a few examples of how i would explain each of these